Hi guys! This video is about Achilles tendon ruptures or tears and I'm going to touch on what it feels like when you have one so that you know when to suspect it, how it's diagnosed, what treatment you should get within the first few days of uh, tearing your Achilles because that's really critical and then the treatment options. Um, people tend to think that you need surgery for it and that's actually not the case anymore. So I'll talk through that and also when you will likely need surgery. Um, then we'll look at things like DVTs because actually there's an increased risk of that and how you can tell if you have that or suspect you may have that. And then we'll talk about rehab and what you need to be doing afterwards and how you can best get your strength back as well as how long it will take for you to get that back. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mareka. I'm one of the physiotherapists from TreatMyAchilles.com where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment for your Achilles injuries. Have a look at the description of this video if you want a link to our website. Okay, so what does it feel like when you tear your Achilles tendon? Now, it's usually during activities where you load the tendon. So that can be, depending on your age or your fitness level or other risk factors will come to it. It can be with something like walking or just stepping over something or stepping down a curb. But more often it's with running or sudden movements like going to hit a ball on a tennis court something like that, or even just pushing something heavy, like one of my patients just pushed his boat um, and that was enough to snap it. So it's usually activity. It's not something that you would only notice later on hurts. You know immediately that you've done something. Now, the second thing that's quite common for people to report is that they heard a loud noise, so like a snap or um, like a gunshot. And often, it's not pain that they feel, but it's more something like if they're playing hockey or something, they'll, they'll look at their teammate and go, did you just hit me in the leg with your stick? Or if they're playing squash, it feels as if somebody's whacked them with the racket on the back of their heel. Now, bizarrely enough, you think that an Achilles tendon tear should hurt like mad. And it doesn't always, especially if it's a complete rupture. Because for tendons to be sore, um, for a tendon tear to be sore, there has to be still some of the tendon left because it's when you stretch the injured part that it causes the pain. But if it's torn completely, there's nothing to stretch because they just move, the ends just move further away from each other. So it can be pretty pain-free with just a mild kind of ache in the heel area or in the, um, in the calf area. Again, you also don't really see much swelling or much bruising necessarily. So in this picture, you can see... Um, the person's injured side is just hanging kind of straight down where the uninjured side is pointing a little bit forwards. And there's only the tiniest little bruise on there. So there's not a lot of swelling um, or, or swe uh, bruising necessarily with that. What am I leaving out? Um, yeah, the bizarre thing is also that patients also come often come in and say, yeah, I can still walk. And then you look at the, how they walk and you go, yeah, but that's not normal walking because they're not really get, managing to push off. So quite often, you'll be able to walk, but just not get that push-off phase with, with, the, um, with the toes. Then again, I have seen patients where they could walk pretty normal, but the history told you something must have torn there, although they're even able to go up on their toes, because most often, if you've got a tear, you won't be able to lift up on your toes on one foot. But I have seen patients where that's um, where they've been able to. And that's when the other muscles that lift you up are strong enough to do that action. And that's actually also documented in the literature. So there's a, quite a few presentations there. But if the history tells you that it was a sh sudden sharp pain or something like a gunshot or feel hit in the, the heel during an activity, you need to suspect an Achilles tendon tear. And remember, it doesn't have to be a complete tear. You can also just tear part of the tendon, in which case you may have fair strength left in there because there's still part of the tendon attached. So it's important to identify both complete as well as partial tears, we call them. Now, why would you tear an Achilles tendon? Because they're not fragile things. Achilles tendons are robust and they're really strong. There's certain things that can predispose you to it. Now, one of them is if you've had a long-standing tendinopathy. So with the tendinopathy, and we've written a lot about that on our blog and in our YouTube channel, you'll find a lot of um, information about that. 
is when you have a chronic irritation of the tendon and you get a breakdown of the tendon so it becomes a bit weaker it becomes a bit softer and if that process goes on unchecked and you don't do anything to change your habits to strengthen the tendon back up then you may be putting yourself at an increased risk of rupture if however you undergo the right treatment that you reduce your impact activities a little bit and you strengthen the tendon up properly then it doesn't matter that you've had a tendon a tendinopathy because you'll you'll make that tendon nice and robust again so if you've got a tendinopathy or ongoing tendon pain make sure you get it treated then you can also have a, a silent tendinopathy where because people often know notice that they they have a tendinopathy because the tendon will be painful but sometimes they just see a lump there and it's not really painful it feels a bit stiff maybe but that's also a sign that your tendon isn't that healthy and can put you at increased risk of rupture. So make sure you consult a physio about that as well. If you've been on corticosteroids for an extended period of time, so take swallowing tablets or taking an inhaler even, then we call that systemic corticosteroids. And there are people with certain conditions like chronic um, or ongoing lung, lung disease or um, asthma, things like that, where they have to take steroids because otherwise they get serious respiratory problems but that can weaken tendons as well. So it's good to understand that. And if you are taking steroids on a long um, basis, it may be about thinking about your training load, thinking about the activities you do. And if you're gonna do high impact activities, making very sure that you build your tendon up strong enough for that. Um, one of the major causes of tendon rupture is quinolone or fluoroquinolone antibiotics. Now this is a specific type of antibiotic it's not all antibiotics it's just a certain kind um, that has an quite a detrimental effect on collagen in your body and the worst bit is that we don't know what a safe dose is of that stuff because there are plenty of reports of people just taking one tablet and experiencing tendon symptoms and pain and um, a flare-up and also people taking full dose, no problem at that point, but six months later, they're having trouble with it. Also, things like even just eye drops with the stuff in or inhalers have been reported to affect tendons. Fluoroquinolone antibiotics, I've done a whole video on that. It's meant to be a last resort antibiotic, but because it works really well for a wide spectrum of bugs, they tend to give it because it's an easy fix. But really, you should be prescribed other things before they go for this. One of the brand names that it comes under is Cipro or Ciprofloxacin. That's the, the most common one in the, in the USA um, that gets this prescribed most often. So if you prescribe that, really consult your GP and say, do I need to take this? Is there anything else I can take? Because that's really not good for you. Um, then if we think of local steroid injections around the tendon, that can predispose you to tendon rupture. That's why, especially when you've got Achilles tendinopathy, it's not a good idea to have a steroid injection, a corticosteroid injection into the tendon or close to the tendon. Older age, unfortunately, predisposes you to ruptures, but that goes hand in hand with decreased activity. So I think we're gonna to have to revise that as a um, risk factor in a few years from now, because the older population is becoming fitter and more active. And if you're unactive or inactive, it's not just your muscles that lose strength, your tendons also lose strength. So if you then suddenly go, oh, I'm going to push this boat, that load may just be too much because you've not done any exercise to load your tendons for months and months and months or maybe years. So I would argue it's not the fact that you're getting older, it's the fact that you're getting unfit and you're not loading your tendon on a regular basis to keep it strong. So keep that in mind. Um, diabetes can affect collagen. So if you've got uncontrolled sugar levels and things, that's really something you need to look after because that can predispose you to tendon ruptures as well, as well as a horde of other um, issues. Okay, so we know the symptoms. We know how it likely feels when you sustain a tear, but how is it diagnosed? Do you need scans? What's the first step you need to take? It can actually, a complete tear can be diagnosed through just a physical examination from a healthcare professional. Now, there are plenty of different tests that you can use to test if that Achilles tendon is still attached. But what the research is showing is actually, if you use a combination of the following three tests, you're more likely to catch that um, 
make the correct diagnosis because actually 20% of complete Achilles tendon ruptures are missed when they are um, being assessed by clinicians. So it's important to be thorough with this. So the first test is the most common one and it is where, or actually I'll start with the one before that. Um, let's start with the one where the patient is just lying, as you can see in this picture, just lying on the front, feet are dropping over the side of the, um, the bed. So you always observe the one foot compared to the other foot. Now the foot where the Achilles tendon is intact, so it's not completely ruptured, will be slightly pointing into plantar flexion. The toes are just pointing like that. Whereas if the tendon is completely ruptured, you'll see that the other foot just drops down. Okay, so you'll see a difference in that. Then also, the most common one is a squeeze test where you squeeze the calf. So in that same position, patient has both legs nice and relaxed, and you squeeze the calf. You want to see that the, the foot moves into more pointing when you squeeze the calf, and you compare the one versus the other. If this side doesn't really move, or just a tiny bit, it's likely that there may be a tear, that the tendon is not pulling the foot up as it should. And then thirdly, you could also palpate the tendon and feel for a gap. But this gap test is not really very accurate. And what the research also shows is, if you do it several days after the person has sustained their tear, you may not feel that gap. So that's not the most accurate one. Now, if you do all three of these tests, and at least two of them are deemed positive, then there's a 100% chance that you have got a complete rupture of your Achilles tendon. So that's quite accurate. But they will not necessarily be that accurate for anybody with a partial rupture, especially if it's only a small portion of the tendon that's been ruptured. So it's always important to listen to the history as well. And if there are things in that history that stands out as very likely a tear, even though your tests are negative, I would still get that person. I would treat it as if it's a tear for that first period until they've had a scan to rule it out. Because like you'll see in a minute, what you do within those first few days can really make a difference between whether you recover properly or not. So with regards to scans, yes, if you suspect a tear, even though all the tests were positive that it is a complete tear, I would still do a scan to confirm it and just to check the extent of it. But do not delay treatment because you're waiting for a scan. Assume it's torn, treat it as if it's torn, until you've got the results of the scan to show you that it's not torn. I'm going to sneeze in a minute. Okay, so why am I on about treat it as if it's torn nearly immediate or immediately? Because what the research is showing is that if you don't immobilize the foot and plantar flexion from the start, um, that tendon, the ends of the tendon can move away from each other. And then you can end up with a tendon that either heals in an elongated position or which means that you'll never get your full strength back in it because now you've got a, a long, weak tendon instead of a nice, short, strong one. Or if they then do surgery, the surgery is more difficult to do because they're struggling to get the ends together. And again, there's more likely to be complications and you may not regain your full strength as well as you would have if it was immobilized immediately. So the first and most important thing within the first few days of for somebody who thinks they've sustained an Achilles um, tear, is that the foot is placed either in a boot or in a plaster cast in some degree of plantar flexion. So that's where the foot pointing down. So this is plantar flexion. And can you see that if I've got my foot in plantar flexion, it brings the ends of the tendon together. So it allows them to knit. Whereas if you're going to put the foot in, in neutral, they're going to move away from each other. Same thing, especially if you're going to put it in, in that position, it's going to even be worse. And there was a good example of one of my patients where she sustained, she was wall climbing while on holiday and her foot slipped, uh, came down the wall and forced into dorsiflexion, snap. Seen in A&E um, in a foreign country and they put her in a boot, but they put her in neutral. And by the time that she got to the UK and came to see me, it was quite interesting. She, she said to me, I think I'm wasting your time because I don't have pain in it anymore. Um, it's, it's pretty much nearly better. And when I did the squeeze test, there was no movement. And when I asked her to go up on her toes, you should see her face because she, could, she didn't realize that she had no strength in it. So then I sent her immediately for scans and stuff. And 
it was too late. Those, those ends had already moved apart. So she had to have surgery and it was really difficult surgery. And months after, she was still struggling to get basic strength back in the heel raise position. Had they initially put her in the boot, but put a heel raise in it, that her foot was in that position, I'm pretty certain that she would have had a much different outcome from that. So definitely in a boot, foot in that position. If you don't have access to a boot, you're on your own, you can't see a doctor quite quickly, then having a shoe or trainer on with a heel on it and putting a heel lift in that trainer can already help. Also, see if you can get crutches because you don't want to be weight bearing on that foot. You don't want to be going through that walking cycle for the first two weeks. So plantar flexed and non-weight bearing with crutches is what you want to be doing. But get yourself to a doc as quickly as possible then. Um, okay, so do you need surgery? Yes or no? These days, no. Actually, what the research is showing is... Um, if they look at patients 12 months on, so after a year when they snap the Achilles tendon, you get exactly the same results with people who underwent surgery versus ones who underwent conservative treatment. So there's no difference between them with regards to strength or function. And also, you'll often hear people say, oh, your re-rupture rate is higher if you don't have surgery. Research doesn't support that. It's showing that the re-rupture rate is the same between the two groups. So let's talk about conservative treatment first. What is conservative treatment for a uh, torn Achilles. It's, like I said, you start off with in a boot. It will be some form of immobilization in a boot for at least six weeks before you start properly weaning off it. Now, there's different protocols for that as well, depending on the type of boot you get. So in the UK, there's really nice fancy boots that's come out that has a hinge, so you can just set the boot at that level and people are quite comfortable with crutches and things and a heel raise on the other side to walk with that. Um, and as it gets better on, I think every two weeks or so, I can't remember the protocol exactly. To be honest, it changes depending on the consultant as well, that the patient sees. You lower it a little bit until they're neutral um, at around six weeks. But the nice thing about the boot is that also after two weeks, they're allowed to take their foot out of the boot every now and again and do some active range of mo motion. So inversion, eversion, little bit of dorsiflexion, not past neutral, so just coming into it a tiny bit. But again, depending on what the consultant feels is appropriate according to the scans that they've done. Um, so essentially, that ankle isn't as stiff as when they've had surgery and had been immobilized for a long, long time. Um, there's also fewer complications with it that chances of infection and things like that. Um, but yeah, so it'll be six weeks, some form of a boot. Then you re wean off the boot and you start back with um, strength training. Uh, depending on the strength you have, it'll either be with bands at the beginning, eventually double leg heel raises, single leg heel raises. And usually after about 12 weeks, if everything goes according to plan and you had that immobilization quite quickly, you'll be back to normal walking and even stair climbing. To get back to full sport can take nine months of longer. So that bit can take quite a long time to build up to. Now, what I often see is that I'll, I've had a few patients actually with Achilles tendinopathies in the other side recently, where the history is that they had a, a snapped Achilles on the, on the opposite side years ago, and now the other side's got a tendinopathy. And then when we test them, there's a massive strength deficit still in the, um, the one that was torn. Now, yes, not everybody gets full strength back and there's often a bit of a lag, but we're talking about quite a lag. And then when you listen to them and their rehab story, they've never been really rehabbed to a high enough level. So I really want to make it clear to clinicians that if your patient has had a Achilles tendon rupture, don't just stop them when they're doing heel raises on a single leg three times 15 or something. They need to build up high to where they've got proper strength in there. Because remember, when you run, up to six times your body weight goes through it. So if they want to get back to running, they need to be doing heel raises with quite a lot of weight on their back eventually. Again, it's about patience there as well. And if you're the patient, you need to understand that it's going to take a lot of dedication on your side because it's not going to be like normal strength training where it comes back within three months, I've got lots of strength. It's going to be at least nine months, like I said, 
but usually to get that full full strength you've got to commit to it to more than a year um, and you want to bring things like plyometrics into it as well because if we think of playing tennis for instance there's high forces when you suddenly sprint for things so you want to get it strong with slow resistance and heavy resistance but then you want to make it sure that it can quickly accelerate and you've got hopping programs and things in there as well but everything put in there at the right time for each patient and there's no time frame with that it depends on what the patient can do and what goals they achieve along the way that you decide whether it's safe or not to start introducing these things um yes so that's that let me think about ah so one of the big risk factors with tearing an Achilles tendon is that it seems people are really at a high risk of developing a deep vein thrombosis. Now, again, the research seems to suggest it doesn't matter if you have surgery versus um, conservative where you can quickly start to move it. It seems people are at equal risk still of getting a DVT. Um, and some research studies have reported the risk as as high as 50%, one out of two people get a DVT. So I think it's worth knowing the signs and symptoms of that. So how can you tell if you've got a deep vein thrombosis? Usually they're really quite uncomfortable and sore. So people will describe a constant ache or a throbbing pain that they get and they can get it at rest so when you're just lying down it's usually worse when your feet are lower than your heart so if you're sitting upright feet down or if you're standing um, you will find the calf and the ankle may swell quite significantly remember it's normal to have a bit of swelling I'm talking about oh suddenly this thing is really swollen and really uncomfortable and becoming more painful it can feel hot to the touch you can see a red area on it as well um yes those are the main things if you suspect that you may be having a dvt or that you one is building speak to your gp as soon as possible if not possible to do that then go to a &E. it is actually really important that it gets diagnosed and treated immediately so don't delay with that they can diagnose it through either ultrasound that they scan it or they can do a blood test um, and you'll, if they find that you have got it, they'll put you on blood thinners. And that's important because if a little bit of that breaks off, it can cause trouble in the heart and the lungs and the brain. Okay. Um, good. I think that's what I wanted to say today. So let me know if you've got any questions. And if you need more help with your injury, you're welcome to consult us via video call. Actually, it may be useful to say when would it be appropriate to consult us if you had a tendon tear. If you suspect you've torn your Achilles, it may be, it's, it's honestly best to see somebody in person because you need that person to do the tests with you and make sure that they properly examine you. So we are not the first point of uh, port of call if you suspect you've torn your Achilles recently. Um, once it's been diagnosed and once your treatment plan has been started, so either conservative or surgery, and once you've been cleared to start with rehab by your consultant, that's when you can contact us because we can help you with the early stages rehab, but we can definitely also, after those six weeks when you start weaning off the, the boot, that's the best time when we can jump in and really over the next few months guide you to get yourself nice and strong. Now I can say goodbye. <laughs>